So now everything I do, it does. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> So this is Skylar. I'm here at Fonko Studios, and this is a completely puppeteered robot. And it's actually being puppeteered by my friend Fawn Davis, right there, you can see the back of his head. <laughs> he is actually uh, looking directly at this phone, which the phone is watching his facial movements, which are being translated into this computer, which are then being translated to Skylar. And it's, <laughs> it's so disturbing. A robot puppet that's being developed here at Fonko Studios as, as a rental to rent out to different productions because they all want that sort of Apple-esque robot. But you can't rent those. So the folks here at, at Fonko have developed Skylar. And I, for whatever reason, am really susceptible to Uncanny Valley. <laughs> Skylar is really disturbing me right now. But the system is wonderful how the puppeteer can just use the phone to act as they're supposed to, and then that the acting is actually translated into the robot itself, into Skylar. And if you could, uh, Fawn, could you introduce us to Skylar so they can see how the lighting works on Skylar's face? Well, the Skylar, when uh, when I talk on this phone, it also uh, manipulates the lighting on the mouth, and then you can do other things like if um, Skylar is in a kind of a sour mood, she might change color, <laughs> or maybe she's feeling a little envious. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she's going to a rave. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think the purple looks good on her, truth be told. Now, this entire robot phone, this is, she's 3D printed. I mean, obviously, other than the electronics of her. Yes. Her mechanism is entirely 3D printed, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And, yeah. And, like, the face plates can be changed out if you need to change her face. Yeah. We, we printed all the parts on Stratasys printers uh, in partnership with Stratasys, and then all the servos are robotic servos. And then the next more exciting system that we're going to be installing is for arm control. We're going to um, use pursuits to control the arms. So the idea is that any actor can uh, walk up to the rig, put on the suit, and do exactly what I'm doing. So I don't, I don't need any special training to operate the robot. I just need to be myself. Yeah, so any actor could operate this. Yes. And you would have those actions translated from this into this robot, even though... It's super, super creepy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that the fact that it's creepy is part of the appeal for a lot of people. <laughs> right. And it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a, a really good example, too, of the advancements of 3D printing technology, which you guys are kind of on the cutting edge of here at Fonco, that you're able to produce a whole robot yes. with 3D printed parts. And, I mean, she's amazing. She really is amazing. And to see her work... With this very compact system, which I would not have expected not knowing much about it, and seeing it up close is actually really, really cool. Okay, so this is, uh, this is me talking, so you can see the flashing of the lights. Mm -hmm. And then um, if I look to the right and the left. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. To the right. Yeah, yeah, it works pretty good. <laughs> you want to see this on my neck here? Yeah, yeah. That's so disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think I... It's, it's, it's because it's so organic. Mm -hmm. This is in development right now. Mm -hmm. But um, we're basically, we're coming up with a different operation for the hand. You see this in some of the newer robots, but a lot of the older animatronics always had cables. So this one is just going to be hinge actuated. That's amazing. Yeah, and it'll so. all be done through a motion capture suit. Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. The future of robots. All the servos are right inside the hand. Oh, that's amazing. And then, of course, once it's all done, they'll be dressed to look more robotic. Right. So. And then we'll, so ideally, Skylar's, will, Skylar will be able to operate, the puppeteer will be able to operate the head, the arms, and is there future plans to make the rest of her work? Or Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're just going to keep expanding it. We've already been done one movie with just the head. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, we're doing a couple more things with just the head. Because if you have a poseable body, um, we could switch out the body very easily for different mannequins and stuff. So the next thing we're going to do is seated. So we'll do a seated version of Skylar that we'll just have conversations. Okay. Um, so it's like, um, you know, basically we retool the robot for whatever shoot is happening. Mm -hmm. And then we take whatever money that we make from renting it out to reinvest in the labor to create new parts for Skylar. And just keep upgrading just Skylar. Just keep upgrading it, yeah. Until so. she takes over. 
until the Robo <laughs> Uprising, and then we'll be in because we're friends. Yeah, right? we're good with Skylar, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone here at Fonco Studios, and especially my friend Fawn for showing me around and introducing me to Skylar. Uh, you can check out more at FoncoStudios.com, and you can find out more about what I do at PropsToHistory.com. Thank you again for watching Props to History. <laughs> that means it's on. <laughs>